You gonna start it out, Dave? Sure. Hello. This is the Cowboys and Unicorns podcast. I'm David. And I'm Dan. And we have super special guest. I think I call every guest special, but uh special guest Corey Schmidgall <laughs> here with us today. Ultra special. Yeah, ultra special. Made of metal. Or <laughs> parts of him are made of metal. Yeah, what were you saying? You have two metal hips. Two metal hips. Yeah. And why is that? Uh, it's one of the wonderful gifts I got from my father. It's uh hereditary. You got uh I think it's my my both my my dad's got both his my grandpa's got both his I got two aunts that each have one. Oh wow and then uh, my uncle andy works out in superiors i think he's gonna have to have okay. one done too here so so was it from sports at all or no no it's just like a genetic deal oh dang so like osteoarthritis in the hips yikes that's wrong i got uh four spikes in my ankle for uh total reconstruction of my ankle and then i have a i just got a new metal plate in my neck <laughs> so you weren't else? you weren't kidding about those medical bills you yeah, mentioned no. earlier <laughs> yeah real right yeah huh, so can you give us what's uh what's the 30 to 60 second recap tell us who you are uh, i grew up in morris minnesota right here in morris minnesota right i live now about nine houses down from where i grew up um which is kind of weird huh. you know 20 years later and uh i haven't lived here for 20 years we moved back in may uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, um, spent a lot of time getting surgery, Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm kind of a seeker, um, I like to learn about stuff, um, been through quite a bit of adversity over the years, so I kind of go down the rabbit holes, different areas, and we can go down any of them. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So did you, um, you grew up here, did you go, where'd you go to college? Uh, first two years, I went to Southwest State on Marshall, mm -hmm. um, okay. and then the rest of the time I went to uh, Moorhead State up in okay. Moorhead, Minnesota. And you said you played football? Yeah, I played football and basketball for the first two years. Um, okay. Basically blew up my body real good there. Um, <laughs> and then uh, when I went to Moorhead is when I had my first major surgery. It was my right ankle, a total reconstruction on that. Um, wow. And then I just transi transitioned into just playing football. At Moorhead? Or Moorhead, yep. Okay. We uh, actually were on ESPN. We got beat 80 to nothing by NDSU. Dang. So not the way you want to be on ESPN. Right. <laughs> we were on there. <laughs> and uh, they had, I was a punter, and they had two uh, punt returns for touchdowns. And oh, I was the guy getting oh, spanked man. and, like, landing on the ground. So do you have it re that recorded somewhere? or is I, I should try to find it because it's ridiculous. <laughs> Are you trying to bury it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They just quit returning, like, punts and kickoffs because they would just start running them back. I mean, they, you know, um, went to Division One quickly after that mm -hmm. game, and okay, man, it was ridiculous. So they were they were D two then. Yeah, yep. <coughs> I mean, we were ba like barely D two. I mean, we weren't very good back then. Um, they've gotten a lot better, uh, from what I hear. Um, but uh, we had no business. We played them in the Fargo Dome, and you know, I think they were close to transitioning over, and it was just ridiculous. So, wow. My claim to fame is being on ESPN, but getting spanked go. by some big <laughs> dude in green. Uh, <laughs> Usually not the the reason you want to be on an ESPN, no, but no, not at all. You can take it. Oh. So you moved here in May from Iowa. Is that Correct. Right? Yep. Yeah, we have a plant down in Iowa. Um, I had been down there for 16 years. Um, lived in a place called Carroll, Iowa, which is um, where we lived. You know, with my wife and two kids. Got a seven-year-old boy named Kane. Nice. And a four-year-old daughter, soon to be five. Her name's Landry. And All right. my wife, Lauren. Cool. Yeah. Did well, you, what oh. brought you down to Iowa? Um, it's, uh, it was pretty crazy. I was living in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Um, and uh, my dad got, uh, called me up one day, and he's like, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to have my hips done. And I'm like, you mean like, like grandpa? He's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm going to need some help down here. I mean, you kind of want to come down and help out. No pressure, no nothing, you know. And actually, it just kind of came up organically in a conversation. He's like, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough help. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, he, I mean, he was ready to do it because he was, he could barely walk. It's yeah. so bad. I'm glad I didn't wait that long to do mine. Um, and I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll come on down. And uh, I lived in, in in Lakeview is where the plant is, and I lived there for maybe like a month or two. I'm like, I got to get a bigger town, and so I moved to Carroll, which is like half an hour away. Okay. Um, lived. Excuse me. 
I lived there for about uh, like four or five years, maybe, before I met Lauren. Um, okay, we just so met you through, met your wife. Yeah, met, met my wife. She's from Des Moines originally. <coughs> uh, met met through a mutual friend, and uh, she actually we we dated for like two months, and then she went to grad school in Kansas City. And so, okay. like for the first year and a half, she was in grad school, and yeah. I was like three hours away. Dang. So. We got to learn how to talk on the phone, which bet, was yeah. <laughs> actually pretty beneficial now, but right. sucked at the time. Yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I uh, like I said, I moved to California right after I graduated from mm-hmm. college, and I was dating my now wife. And yeah, I dated her for like eight months, and before we started dating, I was like, I'm moving to California no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then uh, seven months after living there, I, I moved back, and then after 10 days after moving back i proposed so oh yeah <laughs> so, and yeah. she was here while you were out there yeah she's going to school she yeah. just graduated this oh, spring okay. cool so, where would you go out there uh redding california with some okay. of my buddies who yeah. are going i to lived in modesto there. for maybe a year okay, okay. I was after ap- college after or? college yeah, i was i tried out for the nfl for four years oh, really? trying to be a punter and like a kickoff specialist and so how does that work do you for different you try out for different teams or yeah yeah it's a little different than like you see on tv um we have like like combines but they're they're not publicized it's like you and about 10 Mm -hmm. other dudes at a football field with guys that sit up in the stands and just with a stopwatch and like they look so not interested in what you're doing (laughs) it's like pretty laid back and you're like you kick it and you're like hey did you see that and they're like oh no no okay good (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's pretty high pressure at, uh, yeah. to some extent. And the ones that are interested in guys that are there, they'll be right on the field. Sure. Um, and, and you know, I, I talked to a few teams over the years, but, um, I was pretty close with the Vikings, but then I had, uh, the whole shoulder thing that okay. we can get into that too at some point. And then I, I had to move back. I had a major flare up, like a, a pinch nerve. And so it kind of ended my, my yeah. career. So for f- you say you try out for four years. So how like how often would the combine? Just once a year. Once a year. Yeah. Okay. Um. You know, every once in a while you get a, a phone call that hey, you know, we I, I got a phone call from Green Bay and they're like, uh, are you left footed? Can like can you kick to the left? I'm like I can kick to the left, but I'm right footed. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, bye. Yeah. <laughs> so huh. you know, but that I mean, it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of a weird deal. It's not, you know, you think of it like trying out for the NFL is like what you see in the combine, but this is more. It's, it's just weird. You got just people staring at you, and you kick a ball, and then you go back to the end of the line. Huh. Right. You get hardly any feedback. Right. <laughs> you know, they just right. hear a click of the stopwatch. The ball lands. They stop it, and then you're done. Interesting. So, but yeah, I you know the the whole neck thing. That's that's a whole nother. That, that that's what ended my career. Um, which we can get to that if you guys want to. Yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, um, how should I start this? Uh, my whole adult life, I've, I've had uh, troubles with anxiety. Kind of always been antsy. Okay, yeah. Um, and it's mainly based in, like, physical symptoms. Um, I understand why now it has to do with the next stuff. But like, I was always antsy. And, and finally, uh, at, like, 35, I finally went to, like, a neuro, neurological neurosurgeon. Neuro, yeah. Not a neurologist. Getting tongue-tied already. Um, <laughs> a neurosurgeon. And I'm like, dude, something's up. I know something's wrong. Yeah. I got all these weird, weird symptoms. I'm, I'm dropping my coffee mug. I'm hitting my mouse. Like, huh. I can't pick stuff up. Huh. I get like spasms. It feels like I got like, like, um, you know, when you put your hand on like a um, electric wire, mm-hmm. uh, you get that oh, little sure. bump. I get that down my shoulder. And he's like, well, you know, we could. You probably got a pinched nerve. It's to some extent. And I'm like, yeah, I, hmm. you know, <laughs> something. I yeah. knew something was wrong. Yeah. Um, but before I got to this neurosurgeon, um, when I came back from football, um, I probably went to seven or eight different specialists to kind of figure out what was going on. Yep. None of them had any answers, which is, it just, it kind That's of frustrating. Yeah. It's frustrating, you <laughs> yeah. know? And, but then, you know, being creative as humans, we like come up with all these ideas and I had convinced myself I had a brain tumor, which was very constructive. Right. For sure. <laughs> you know, you think of worst case scenario. And so, um, getting back to the the, the neurosurgeon thing I, I did this mri to drink this goo which is terrible huh. it's not as good as the peanut butter beer but oh, dang. <laughs> which is delicious by not, the way not much is that good though <laughs> yeah right and that's from your sister yeah yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's good stuff who's the what's the brewery uh grand armory brewery yeah i don't know yeah. where it's out of i think there. that's in yeah right there in grand rapids michigan i think but yeah. it's it's their 
<laughs> Nutter your business peanut butter Nutter stout, your and it's it's amazing. It's beer so, that tastes like peanut butter. Which yeah, is if you can get your hands on a great that combination, you need it <laughs> yeah. in your life. Yeah. And so I had this MRI, and I'm like, all right, cool. Here we're gonna get some answers, and yeah, you know, I'm like, it's gonna show the tumor. We're gonna do the surgery. We're gonna, you know, and I was, you know, kind of made my own demise before I even knew anything. Right. And so I'm, I'm kind of pacing in the room, and, and the, the neurosurgeon walks in. He's like, you should probably sit down for this. I'm like, okay. Oh, crap. Here we go. And I mean, <laughs> my heart's just pounding in my neck. It's like, poof, 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 poof. Yeah. You know, you, when you get that fear, you taste that metallic stuff, and, you're, and oh, I, was, yeah. I was right there. And I'm like, oh, you know, you know, heaven help me, whatever, you know. I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> praying to every kind of, you know, Sweet God baby or, Jesus. Yeah, deity and universe. And he's like, do you ever, uh, do you ever break your neck? I'm like, what? <laughs> and then he's like, yeah, you broke your neck at some point. I'm what? Like, All right. Uh, what? <laughs> you know, I was like, I was wow. just like dumbfounded because I thought it was going to be, you know, I, he found a tumor or something. And yeah, apparently I broke my neck at one point. And, and you, so you have no memory or like you don't. I, I know now. Okay. At, okay. The, at the point of the, of the appointment, he was like, just kind of think back. Do you ever fall? Do you ever get in a really bad car accident? I'm like, well, no car accident, but I. There was this time when I was like 18, I fell off a deck um, and kind of like landed weird. And um, I woke, you know, I'm like, oh, like, yeah, that's when it happened. And like, so mm-hmm. I was knocked out for like a minute. Yeah. And I woke up to people like standing above me and they x rayed my, my shoulder and my collarbone and all that stuff. But um, apparently it was one of the, it was my uh, C6 vertebrae that it broke one of the wings of the vertebrae, and, which is not painful. Okay. Um, but it, it just broke and it just kind of hung out there. And over the years, it kind of grew back. It was offset, and it started growing a little bone spur into the nerve. And so that's where my pain was coming from. Okay. So then what freaked me out the most is thinking about, okay, from 18 to 26, I tried to play. I played college football. I played college basketball, and I tried to play in the NFL. I got hit once wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. Paralyzed. Yeah. I mean, on top of the fact that I, I mean, we can get really deep of thinking of like, okay, how did I not get paralyzed? You know, I was a quarter of an inch from being paralyzed. Right. Yeah. And so I was like, so my adult life, I've had anxiety over physical symptoms because I've had a broken neck. Crazy. Wow. I'm cool that it now it's, I yeah. mean, it's, right. it's crazy. Like seeing your guys' face, it's like, <laughs> oh, crap. But to me, it's like, I'm cool that like I can right. help people now. But it's, yeah, that's wh- totally one of those life's like when you're going through it that you just, makes you question all sorts of things yeah. and makes you yeah. rethink what your purpose is and all hmm. yeah. all that yeah i mean i i know that there was a reason that i didn't get paralyzed yeah um you know the greater purpose and, and helping others and you know I, I i really believe that you know the suffering i've been through with with physical pain is to help other people you know yeah. that's, that's what i'm best at that's what i enjoy but it's still crazy to think about like i and broke my neck yeah right. what were the like what were the next steps after that doctor told you that um yeah so we uh scheduled surgery within that month um to get it fixed which is another crazy story because he he got it fixed and he came out and he's like do you want your uh, bone fragments I'm like, no <laughs> and i was like wait a minute what no bone fragments he's like yeah i pulled three bone fragments out of your nerve and they were embedded in your nerve Wow. And I had to shave your bone down. And I was in bad pain and on on painkillers. And so I was like, uh, no, I'm good. <laughs> but, I, I mean, that's that's why it was so painful. Yeah. So they broken bone off fragments and, from when you fell. Yep. Had been embedded in my nerves. How many years? Yeah. 17 years later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it, one wrong, somebody rear-ended me. I mean, I could, like that. Right. Dang. So was that while you were still in California or in Iowa? Uh, that that was, uh, I was in Iowa. Yep. And I actually, I just went there today to get my, I just had my neck redone, uh, 21 days ago. Um, they, they were watching the level below. It was kind of banged up from the same incident. (laughs) Um, and then about May, this like right right when we were moving, actually, I started to get the flare up again, kind of the same symptoms and the disc kind of, kind of failed and blew out the back. So they take that out and then they kind of ground it down again. So, so. (laughs) <laughs> so like when you work out now do you do you work out at uh, empowered living yep is that okay yep yeah are there any like precautions or things that you're like limited by or like what's what do you have to do yeah right now i'm i'm you know i just got the full go but i gotta test out what what works 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, any kind of, you have a, anytime you have like a nerve disruption, you're going to get like muscle spasms because the nerves are firing and they don't fire like, like your other hand is fine. Yeah. My right hand, just, it fires, but then like all of a sudden, like my shoulder will spasm, kind of lock down. Well, um, you work out sometimes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, now this is after surgery. Now before surgery, it was fine. I would just have like really sore grip. Sure. Um, but I, when I, when I squat, I have to be careful with my hips. Like I'll just use a chair like we're sitting in. I'll just tap my butt and go back up. But right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So there we, um, you know, I mean, everything we do is scalable, which means you can just kind of change it to like whoever, whatever fitness level or whatever adaptability. And for me, it's just, I kind of do what I can and do it the best I can. And, and you're a coach at Empowered yep. Living. Yep. So like, what's the what's empowered living about what are you doing there is uh, it crossfit gym or not not well, quite we, we you know we we're not affiliated right now but we do teach a lot of the crossfit methodology um, okay. a lot of our instructors are have certificates uh, yeah. in crossfit you know someday okay. we're hoping to be crossfit mm -hmm. but uh, we do you know high high uh, intensity interval training we do yoga uh, we do rowing classes we do mobility um, it's kind of just an overall mm -hmm. class experience more so than just going to um, a gym where you're just kind of headphones on by yourself. So right. it's a really good community of people that are just there to do the same thing you're doing. Yeah. Sure. And Kate started that. Kate yep. Schultz. Yep. Kate Schultz okay. and Tony and Kate, they're our landlords. Oh, we okay. Rent, oh, we rent from them. So yeah. 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 She's super nice. Yeah. Yeah. I always try to chase John, Tony, but he's like, he's like ridiculously in shape. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. It's like for the first minute I got him, but mm -hmm. every minute after that, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. He's always biking or running or doing something. Sweet. How long has Empowered Living been going? Or how long have you been there? Have you been there since I've the beginning? I've been there since uh, June. Okay. Um, I teach class on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's called the it's called um, Elevate. I don't know why. <laughs> um, just kind of, you know, just come up with something. Yeah. That but no, it's, you know, we kind of like to elevate it up a little bit and, you know, have fun. And um, that's the thing about it is, like, we make it fun. You know, we're not too serious about it. And, you know, we just try our best. And, right. Um, but we uh, we do a free class every Saturday at nine. So yeah, I'm gonna go to just that. saying you do. I'm going this this yeah. Saturday. Saturday actually, it's at the park. It's at you the have park to walk right out here. Your front door. Oh yeah, I probably should. So there was out. one Saturday my wife and I were gonna go, and then we just slept in. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's something about like so empowered living sounds super cool, but there's this intimidating element of, well, I could go to the RFC mm -hmm. and I could just like do my own pathetic workouts and I don't have anybody else who's like <laughs> yeah. looking at me, judging yeah. me, but, or you come there and we could all cheer for you. Yeah. And then you can be like, well, there's a guy there that's like three quarters metal doing it. <laughs> I can do it. Right. Yeah. But what if I find out I broke my neck at some point? <laughs> then we would be cool. All right. Yeah. Then, then we'd be yeah. really close. Everybody would be like, look at no. those dudes. Maybe I'll come on Saturday. Do it. No, yeah. well, I was like I'm working out. Go. So, yeah, okay. So, so I'll tell you, like, just for to tell you, like, almost everybody that ends up coming and trying it, they're like, it's way different than I expected. Okay. It's so much fun. It's pretty much everybody. That's the, that's the main thing they say. Sweet. Yeah. And I've never, I've never been one for lifting. So like, mm -hmm. I think I'd enjoy trying yeah. it, but yeah. I was homeschooled. And so like, I never was like in a sport or anything right. where like you actually learn the fundamentals of yep. it. And so then it's like. I mean, you don't really know where to start, and I like running, so I'll just run and right. do yeah. some push-ups and. And stuff, there's like but. story after story. Like my my wife, you know, Lauren. She she I programmed uh, two six-week workouts at okay. our house. She had never touched a barbell in her life. Like she was a swimmer, didn't yeah. Do much lifting, and, and so she did all the stuff at home. And then she came. I'm like, just just come try class, and she's yeah. like, no. You know, and I I would keep bugging her about it. She's like, oh, you go talk to your boyfriends at the gym. I'm like, all right, thanks, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, honey. Um, but she finally came and, and tried it, and she, I don't think she's missed a class in years. Like she's okay. she's like three years in. Yeah, no, she's the fit one in the house. That's just the chubby one. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, so. you got to get that back. I know, right? Yeah, my uh, the peanut butter porters aren't gonna <laughs> help out at <laughs> all here. My best friend sent me a message today of this thing he found on Facebook, and it's called like the dad pouch or something. Mm, yeah, I saw that. It's like <laughs> it's like a fanny pack. Yeah. With like a pocket, but it's like a hairy belly, beer gut, uh, like thing, yeah. beer gut nastiness that's like printed on there. So it's like to have the dad bod without having to eat mm -hmm. the junk food and actually be unhealthy. 
it's like hilarious and disgusting. Yeah. It's uh, like the opposite of what most people are looking for. Right. Yeah. But I'm sure they'll sell some. Dad I'm buys sure them. Cool. Money. Yeah. No, no, not really. Not, never been a I thing. think that's basically just a thing that people tell themselves because they get to that point mm-hmm. and they're like ashamed and so they're like oh yeah dad bods are cool now yeah so. you want to hear a funny story my daughter's you know four she'll be five soon and so she's like, yeah you know they're just so transparent and <laughs> oh yeah and she's like mommy what are calories and mommy's like what she's like what are calories she's like you know blah 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 but whatever i mean they're irrelevant but right and then, and then she goes daddy must eat a lot of calories <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> like, thanks honey oh, you know? so good. thanks a lot yeah, appreciate good. that and you're a fit dude yeah i mean but, I, I do all right but but you're also a big dude big so dude, like yeah. i think kids also don't equate that it's yeah. just like oh well like my dad's big <laughs> yeah so yeah. he must eat calories yeah if i eat calories i'll get big too Yep. All the calories. Or, or it's, uh, mommy, why isn't your belly button as big as daddy's? Does <laughs> <laughs> it go that far in? <laughs> like, I'm self conscious. I love it though. There's some, they're just button. so, like, no filter. Right. right. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you talked about how your experiences with going through your neck surgery and just all your injuries mm-hmm. overall have kind of basically helped you to realize that those are all towards fulfilling and and maybe equipping you better to do what you're passionate about, which mm-hmm. is helping people. Right. So, I mean, in a practical way, like, what's that look like? How, I mean, you work selling concrete, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, like, <laughs> practical level, uh, I mean, you work at Empowered, but what's that look like, having that passion of yours being fulfilled? Yeah, yeah, and actually it kind of developed out of, like, um, healing myself with the whole anxiety thing. You know, I started doing these rituals and habits every morning and every night. And, uh, and so I had the opportunity to help a few people here and there. Um, and it just kind of popped up and, right. uh, you know, I started doing a little bit more often. It's the, a majority of the things I do are with people that do suffer from anxiety. Yeah. Um, you know, being someone I've learned to manage it, you know, mine's basically down to like claustrophobic situations like flying, Sure. MRIs, like the little tunnel of death. Yeah. You ever had an MRI? I yeah, haven't. I think once. Yeah, they're terrible. Yeah, they're not, not pleasant. <laughs> no, and being a big dude, like they shove you in there and mm-hmm. then they flip on like a magnetic field, which is like a fear-inducing field. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so I started doing that as, you know, I started just kind of saying, well, this, this is what's worked for me. Why don't you try this? Um, yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. And that was, you know six or seven years ago and so it was it was very uncomfortable to like let people know that i struggle with that you know right. but it was healing yeah and so um that kind of led to okay well maybe like the stuff i've known as an athlete and someone that's been into fitness and health kind of could translate into um doing, i mean and i've always kind of helped like my family with nutrition and exercise um and so like five or six years ago i went to start coaching in the gym. Yeah. Um, but there again, like the people I would meet, they're like, you know, I really struggled because I'm pretty, you know, open about it now. It's, I mean, people see me and they're like, what? Right. And even one time, uh, this is funny. I, I was having another MRI and I have to get sedated. And so my mom will have to come with me and drive me home. And, yeah. um, the dude that was doing the, the MRI, he's like, oh, he's a big dude. He'll be fine. And my mom was like, nope. <laughs> she's like because <laughs> she's seen me freak out it's right i can't control it you know yeah. it's just it's a phobia it's not like a you know it's like i wish i wasn't scared like right. i wish i didn't freak out right it's sure. just triggered well like, and yeah it's not a logical you can just no tell yourself okay no yeah. you can this. do all the breath work you want but right. you know if, i mean there's just certain things that you i don't know what it's from that's the thing it's like you try to figure out what it's from but if you can learn to manage it it's not that bad and so the more I was talking to people, the more, you know, you know people would, and I've helped a, you know, a local gal that is from, you know, a, uh, that I knew from high school and yeah. she just kind of connected me online. And, and so we kind of encompassed a little bit of everything, which with was the anxiety, the nutrition, and, uh, she ended up losing like 160 pounds just Dang. by changing her nutrition. Oh, wow. But then on top of that, like she was, she was like, you know, I know I need more work on this. And so she kept going and. Um, I think now she's teaching um, an anxiety course at like the outpatient for a Betty Ford Center. Oh wow! Yeah. So cool. and it's 
I just do it as it comes up. I don't, I don't, right. You know, actively seek people out. It just kind of comes up. You know? Right. So the, uh, the daily routines that you were talking about mm-hmm. in the mornings and evenings, what does that look like? Is it like meditation or yoga or I mean, what, what does that look like? Yeah, I can show you. Um, so Evernote, we all know what Evernote is, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So on Evernote here, I got, I just, I do like seven or eight things uh, and I try not to miss, um, because when I miss, I feel a little bit off cause I've been doing it long enough. Sure. Um, and so like every morning I get up and try to, you know, uncross my eyes like most people, but as I'm sitting, <laughs> I'm sitting there, you know, and drink my, I'll drink a little coffee and yeah, kind of hang out and then I'll read through these things that I've kind of outlined. I used to do just like I am statements, which is like, um, um, reprogramming your beliefs. You know, when you believe that you're scared of everything, you have to unprogram that. Sure. Right. So it becomes like, like self-fulfilling pr- prophecy. Yeah, yeah. I am brave. I am confident. I am this, I am that, you know, kind of yeah. keep them in a positive tone. Um, and so they've evolved over time, but like right now I just, I'll read my values, like what I value in life, my goals. Um, I'll do prayer or meditation. Um, read my, like I have a vision statement. Um, and then start, start, um, positivity. Like just like you, it might end up just being some music. Sure. Um, something positive. And then I do breath training. And then meditation. And then I also do like a, a journal right before I go. Sure. So what's like that timeline look like? Is that uh, like 15, 20 minutes? <coughs> okay. Yeah. So pretty simple. Pretty simple. Yep. Right. Yeah. The biggest thing has been the breath training. Um, you know, even on the way up here, I was like, man, I'm going to be on a podcast. And I was kind of like, I got my own head out of nothing. You right. Know? I mean, we're just talking, but yeah. I'm like, so I started doing a little box breathing, which is you just inhale and hold it for four seconds. Sure. Exhale for four seconds and hold it for four seconds inhale for four seconds and you just kind of go around and you're just kind of um slowing down everything right and kind of just being conscious of right where your own Mm -hmm. self is at yeah and go ahead oh have you ever heard of wim hoff yep okay yeah i listened to he was on the um oh what's uh i'm pretty i'm blanking on the podcast joe rogan broadcast um yeah he was on the joe i didn't listen to that one i listened to the who's the other guy he's the investor and he's the four hour body for uh uh, Ferris. Ferris. Yeah. Yep. I listened to the Ferris one. I know he's also on the Rogan yep. podcast, but yep. I do some of that too. Okay. Um, he's got an app actually. That's pretty easy. It takes about three minutes. Um, his is more like is um, hyperventilation, not in the scary context, but you over oxidate yourself. Okay. Hmm. And, and then you, um, you can also try to hold your breath for a certain amount of time. Um, and it's just, it just helps. There's so many benefits to oxidation, oxidating your body. Um, but yeah, I, and, and, you know, I, it's funny because, um, I talk to some people about the meditation piece and they go right into, um, similar to talking to people about yoga. They think it's like a spiritual thing. Right. It's the new age, bro. I know, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that's the interesting, I mean, basically anything that we've talked about on the podcast, right? It's mm-hmm. based on where you come from culturally, mm-hmm. what, you know, what your background is as far as your religion and all those things. Right. Just like that word like yeah. yoga or meditation yeah. automatically like i mean that, i was like right away i'm curious i'm like okay yeah. well, what's that are you buddhist well just like what's meditation <laughs> yeah. like uh, it's it's extremely simple you know yeah. everybody everybody prays for the most part um right or if not they they hope which is very similar to praying sure um praying is you know speaking to whoever you're speaking to when you pray yep meditation is just listening sure it's very simple you know, you try to, you try to work on hardly anybody can do it without thinking and you try to work right. on letting go of those thoughts. And that's basically it. You just sit still, try to work on your thoughts. That was the biggest game changer with my anxiety. You know, yeah. anybody, anybody with anxiety has trouble controlling their thoughts of the future. Right. And so when you sit in practice of, Hey, this is coming up. What's that all about? I don't know. And then I let it go. And it's really that tough. I'm not, I don't sit like with my legs crossed on a pillow and, you know, um, my kids do that. <laughs> um. Yeah. My kids will do the okay symbol. I'm like, what are you doing? They're like, I'm, I'm meditating. <laughs> I don't know. It's like on Kung Fu Panda or something. Right. Oh yeah. I just sit on my chair and kind of just close my eyes and I do the breathing and the meditation at the same time. Right. So, so I, I've heard when people talk about meditating, they talk about like noticing your thoughts and like mm-hmm. you said, like letting go. Mm-hmm. And I, that's always confused me. Like I've had a hard time. Like, I don't think if I tried, I'd be able, like, I would know whether or not I was mm-hmm. meditating or not. Right. And sometimes I feel like, well, I naturally notice when certain thoughts mm-hmm. happen. Like, does that mean I'm meditating or does that just mean I'm self-aware in that moment? I think you're aware of the moment. Um, you know, the, the, a lot of people talk about um, mindfulness, mm-hmm. uh, mindfulness meditation. Yeah. It's just being aware of where you're at and what you're doing. 
Um, my, uh, like meditation is just kind of getting a grasp on not letting yourself go down the rabbit hole of your mind. Right. So like you can have these thoughts come up and, and if you tend to obsess about them, they're going to keep coming up. But yeah. if you yep. can learn to be like, well, I'm not going to think about that right now. I'm going to let it go. And you can do like mental picturing, like you're going to blow it into a balloon and let it float away. Right. I mean, I've had to do that. I'm very visual. So yeah. like a lot of mine are visual. Like I'll, I'll grab it and like shoot it like an arrow, get it out of my head and right. do a lot of those kind of techniques. But right. No, it's, that good. it's like intentionally choosing to say, yeah, this is my head. Yeah. These Shh. are my thoughts. Like right. I can be in control of yep. them and they're not in control yep. of me. Yeah. Yep. Sense. That sounds super helpful. Yeah, I definitely have obsessive thoughts that give me anxiety. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I get, I can relate to that. <laughs> well, and that's, I mean, that's the other thing is that I talk about it because a lot of people don't, and there's so many people out there that have it. Um, mm-hmm. People I know, yeah. you know, that I see on a regular basis. You can just tell it. People yeah. have it. <laughs> yeah, you can look at people and go, ah, you're not, you're not at rest. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I mean, I plan to do some some seminars and and some talking about it because people around here know me as who I was sure but they don't know like the story right and it um, it's healing and this is funny I was my son's kind of got the same thing he's seven and he's kind of having issues at night with being scared and mm-hmm. um you know I was talking to him one night and just kind of explaining a few things and you know my job as a dad is to teach him how to think you know I don't I, I'm not going to tell him what to think mm-hmm. but I want to teach him how to think right. for himself yeah. um and so one night I just, I start crying and I'm like, what is this all about? You know? And I, I don't know why. And, and my son's like, you know, daddy, you know, if, if you got some stuff in your head, you need to let, let go. I'll give you a hug <laughs> you know, <laughs> poof, more, you know, more yeah. tears coming, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, and yeah. like, what's going on? How are you the adult? Yeah. And, uh, I, I, I think about, you know, a couple hugs later, I was like, you know, I'm talking to him. Like it's me as a kid. Sure. We're very similar. Yeah. And so once I realized that it's been super healing for that inner child that I got that was struggling with the same thing. So it didn't happen from 18 on. It's been going on from six or seven oh, yeah. my right. life. Oh, yeah. And so I was like, wow. I was like, you know, mind blown. And, and so it's <laughs> been super healing as an adult to talk to my kid about it and help him. Right. And so I'm like, you know what? You're super lucky. I didn't have people that understood. Right. You got a dad that understands that and goes through the same thing yeah. still. Yeah. Well, so. and I think it's, <laughs> I think maybe there's a piece of a lot of people. Well, I mean, we've all gone through those same things. Mm-hmm. It's just that the majority of people choose to just basically write those off as bad things. Right. Don't choose to actually like the thoughts that come up, they push yep. them away, but yep. it's not actually in an intentional way of like, okay, I'm, I'm recognizing the thought and I'm choosing to like, let it go right. or I'm choosing to process it. Mm-hmm. Instead, it's like, nope, this brings up uncomfortable feelings or yep. hurt or pain. And so then they just push it back down yep. Yep. and suppress it instead of in a healthy way, you know, saying, okay, yep. I'm going to, I'm going to actually deal with it. Yep. And it's very, I mean, I draw, when I tell, I help people, I draw parallels to, um, um, recovery from surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, the best way to, to heal from surgery is to push yourself through the pain through the hard part yeah consistently not so it burns you like you get set back but consistently and often keep pushing through that pain because you're going to heal yeah now mentally that's hard to do putting yourself in these places that you know terrify you is hard to do but exposing yourself little by little in a consistent manner is going to heal you mm-hmm. for me that's that's talking to people about it yeah and i think i mean like even myself as a uh, as a teenager and going mm-hmm. through tough stuff. Um, I think it ties to like, you don't realize the mental stamina that's mm-hmm. needed. And so what I would do is I would just go run every single day and I would just push myself mm-hmm. like as hard as I possibly could in a way to kind of show myself like that I can push yep. through this. And during that time, while I was so focused on like the pain of running, mm-hmm. I was focused on that pain. And so I was almost in a sense able to think more clearly about the other things that emotionally I was Mm -hmm. going through that were painful and process through those because I was focused on something else and realizing like, okay, I'm stronger than I think. 
That's but. extremely relatable. Um, you know, for sports for me, it was a way to slow things down. Sure. Yeah. Um, and, and I did the same thing. Like when I played football, like I would, people were trying to tackle me. I would run into them faster than they're running into me. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I'm sure you guys both know about flow state, right? And so when you get in playing every for me, when I would play sports, I'd get in this flow state where everything was just a little bit slower right. when I was doing it. And so when I was doing that, everything was slow and I could kind of see things a little bit ahead of time. Yep. But it was also quiet. Sure. I mean, you know, sports are loud, but for me it was quiet. Like okay. I could just it was like fluid. Yeah. Um once sports ended, I didn't have that. Right. And that's when like poof, right off the cliff. And when that's when I got the worst. But that's because I, I, I um relied on like your running, um right. mine of sports. Right. We rely on these other things for outlets rather than doing the the painful thing like, you know, pushing through the the mental work of these habits. Right. You know, and it's mentally you have to strip and get naked and be like, this is who I am and my most vulnerable. I'm struggling. Like right. that's the worst thing to do as a dude is tell yeah. people like you're struggling. Yeah. You yeah. know? And, and so you have to do that over and over and over until you're like, everybody knows about it. Right. Big deal. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, I honestly have no problems talking about it anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, At what point in your life was it that you kind of like realized you were dealing with anxiety and you weren't like, emotionally in in a great place mm-hmm. and decided to make these changes yeah. and yeah it's crazy um i remember there was a time there where every night i would sleep with like an ice pack because i thought that i was gonna have a heart attack it's very common for people that have anxiety i was thinking that sure. they're, they're gonna have a heart attack which nobody's ever died from a panic attack right um, and disclaimer if you are having panic attacks get a hold of me i can help you get through them um there you go it's, it's a terrifying time but there is help so get a hold of me yeah um and so i would sleep with this ice pack and i'm like i don't want to you know i don't want to be terrified that i'm going to die again tonight and and so i was like you know i actually started praying about it and i'm like i just need something or someone to kind of help me um and so you know fortunately it was my mom um she bought me this book it's called hope and help for your nerves it's by uh, dr claire weeks and she's like a british chick Okay. Um, I just listened to the Audible book again. Yeah. Um, which I currently, you know, revisit some of those books that have helped me over the years. Yep. So I did that. Um, I started talking to a guy that uh, dealt with people that had anxiety disorders, um, probably like once every two weeks. Um, and then I found an online community. It's uh, healingwell.com. And they have an online thread where you can kind of post anonymous. It's actually a good way to dip your toe sure. in, into healing. Um, healingwell.com, that is. Um, and so I started doing those three, three things. Yeah. Kind of breaking the seal a little bit. And then, uh, uh, yeah, from there it got better slowly. Um, you kind of get desensitized to, to the, it's like anything like when you're sunburned, like the last thing you want to do is go in the sun. Mm -hmm. Right. When you're super high anxiety, the last thing you want to do is go around stuff that terrifies you. Sure. Cause then it gets that much higher, that much hotter. Um, but I started to get a little desensitized, so I would kind of open up the spectrum of what I was doing. Um, and then by that time, um, I got around a group of people that were into self-development and I started reading some books and, and started um, developing a morning routine. And um, I would kind of noticed like right away, the more often I did that, the better I felt. Sure. Uh, and, and that was kind of the break point. And that was, uh, so I'm 40 now. I would say right around the same time I, I found out about my neck. So right about five years ago okay, is when it took a big swing and it's been really, you know, really good since that's right. the best it's ever been right now. Yeah. Like I have, have nothing going on right now unless I got to fly, which I made it to Hawaii. So apparently I can do it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I mean, my wife had to carry me around. But no, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> so <clears throat> what would you say? So like, <clears throat> I'm definitely relating to a lot of things you're talking about, about having anxiety and Mm -hmm. even as a kid, right. Um, sometimes even worse as a kid, as I've grown older, figuring out Mm -hmm. how to deal with it more, how to let go of things. Um, but you're also talking a lot about like internal work and mental work and Mm -hmm. healing. And for me, that's always, it's like somewhat intriguing, but it's also, it scares me a little bit because I also like, not sure Growing up from like a like a religious background, there's a lot of not concrete type work, yeah. like whether that be spiritual or mm-hmm. prayer, or 
just like even talking about your spirit or your mm-hmm. soul or or whether things are broken or whole and stuff mm-hmm. and sometimes for me that's that's been like almost causes more anxiety like right. okay i gotta work on myself like i'm not okay like i'm not enough mm-hmm. type thing so i don't know if you if you don't want to comment on that or yeah. or what i don't know like what what's the good balance because sometimes I like personally, I can be really inward focused Mm -hmm. and I get so focused inward on fixing myself or how I'm doing that it can become like a little unhealthy Right. where I need to, I need to put my head up. I need to, you know, I need to go for a run. I need to interact with the Mm -hmm. people for me to be like, okay. Yep. Yeah. And, and without going down the rabbit hole, the religion stuff, um, you know, like you guys have been. Last couple of months. Yeah, no, <laughs> we no, we don't it. have to. We don't. No, we don't no, have to go no, down. I can, but uh, no, I'll set fine. it up in a different way first. Um, so, what the setting up, like your beliefs, your values, your vision, um, your mantras, what it does is it kind of sets up this box of where you can like work. So, let's say it's a soccer field. So mm-hmm. you have the outline of the soccer field, and you know what you're, what's out of bounds. Yeah. Right? Now you can throw your religion, throw your values, and what you believe throw your mantras, throw all this stuff in there, and that's where you play your game. Uh huh. You don't have to worry about if you win or lose, just that you're playing. Right, right. Now, the mental work comes in, and you just kind of are open to what you might find. There's mm-hmm. no wrong way to work on yourself. Okay. Um, you know, we all know that as humans, we're fallible. We're sinful, right? As they right. say in religion. But mm-hmm. there was one dude that, you know, died for our sins, so we know that that's kind of taken care of. Uh huh. They also say that you know God is within us, so why not explore what's within us? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of beautiful things in there, right? And the single most important thing I've done, on you know, ahead of my children and ahead of my wife, was work on myself, mm-hmm. because if I don't do that, I'm not a good father, I'm not a good husband, I'm not a good brother, right? So digging into the mud of your inner self, but laying out this parameter of where you're going to play the game of self self development it's it's like the most important thing you can ever do and you have direction you know you have you have like for our value like my values my personal values i just use it as a yes no so if something comes up that i get asked to participate in it doesn't fall in there it's like no hmm. it's a very right. easy way to make decisions right it cuts down on all this inner turmoil well and it's something also I, i'm assuming right you have probably a document where mm-hmm. especially those main values you you have those somewhere mm-hmm. and it's not just like, ah, oh, well, you know, cause I, I mean, not to dive into the religion <laughs> side and I don't think we have to go too far, to we that. Can, no, but, <laughs> but I'm just thinking, um, you know, from the standard religious perspective, um, uh, I mean, basically what you, what your Dan was talking about is like Christ died for your sins. Mm-hmm. Therefore you're righteous and you're holy. And, he has given you identity mm-hmm. and your identity is in him. Right. And so if you start to think about like that you're imperfect or mm-hmm. that you have issues or you have anxiety, like instead of saying, well, like those are things to think on and to work mm-hmm. on, like it instead becomes more of a shame and like drives you deeper into anxiety. Right. Cause you're like, well, I'm covered and I'm good why do I have these yeah. things that I know aren't right and mm-hmm. aren't healthy? And that's the fun thing about it is like we get, there's a little bit of interpretation involved. You know, you talked about, you know, just having one person up front interpreting the word of God. Right. Well, that's written in a book that was interpreted by man. Right. Why, why can't you interpretate or interpretate? Interp- <laughs> interpretate. <laughs> why can't you interpretate? The- yeah. <laughs> gum. Dad gum. No, I think you know what I mean. Though is like you, there's there's a little bit of flexibility in there as far as how you interpret that in your own life. Right. Oh yeah. Total. I mean, taking it to a practical life application yeah, is exactly. super important. And I think what you're saying. I mean, it's making me think of just the fact that a lot of times, right? You say, okay, like I know that the Bible has like absolute truths, mm-hmm. which I would call my values, mm-hmm. but I haven't necessarily actually sat down. And then looked over all these things that I would say are my values right. and actually like, like intentionally said, okay, so, you know, murder yeah. is wrong, right? Like <laughs> right. kind of laid out like for myself in mm-hmm. a practical way right. of, you know, here's the things that I believe, here's the things that I value, mm-hmm. here's, and, 
And I think that that's a super healthy th- piece. Yeah. And then it also, I think, really helps in your interactions with people yep. and when you come on situations because instead of, and I mean, I believe the Bible is a great place to go to to help you gain more perspective, but instead of just being like, oh, well, like somewhere, I don't remember the verse, but it says it's wrong, so it's wrong. Just right. even on a practical level, like just laying out, well, like that's no. Right. Like, th- that's a no from here. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. I think that's good or that's right. Yeah. So how like how did you come to determine like determine your values or those parameters cuz when you like when you say that I'm just like hmm like how would I do that mm-hmm. like what would well, I Well and you know the first one is is my family that's my number one mm-hmm. you know I mean that's the most important thing to me and that I mean that's easy one I and mean, that makes sense Yep um second one is love For and sure. that and that is not just you know with my wife with my kids but it's like for people yeah like my my circle of influence the people i interact with on a daily basis and my wife will attest to this we went to hawaii you know, last february and everywhere we went we're like hey brah like people just talk to me because i exude that like i'm interested in other people like I'm, i have a very positive energy about me and wherever we go people yeah. will just talk to me i don't know why yeah it's kind of weird and people can pick up on it though. yeah yep or, and so um, you know those are the first two things i value yep i'll pull up my list here and then it's an optimism. It's optimism slash love. And so, you know, being an optimi- optimistic person towards other people is a way of giving them love. Sure, yeah. Um, humor, having a good time, mm-hmm. health and wellness, obviously. Practicing bravery is doing the things that scare me, you know. And, and I just actually put that on there um, in, in talking with my son. and Because, we, you know, we, we talk about his mantras and his are, I am brave and I am confident. I'm like, man, you know, I, I've said that so many nights to myself. Yep. That, that's got to be a value is like practicing bravery, practicing doing those things that terrify me. Right. Um, like at work, if they ever ask me to talk, I say yes right away, even before I know what it's about. Because I know it scares me. Sure. That's working on desensitizing yep. that anxiety. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then learning and, and legacy. And yeah. so, um, you know, the love thing, that, that encompasses, you know, the two main um rules that we were given you know love your lord the lord Lo- yeah yep and then you know yeah love god and love listen, others. listening yeah, to that list it yep. sounds super good i guess when i i don't know f- for whatever reason listen that word like define your values <laughs> and like for some reasons like trigger me for, okay. for a second <laughs> and then i listen I, to those, I listen to those values and i'm like oh like, yeah. like that's i could simple. That's i could pick five values just go online and, and pick five like, yeah and those seem very broad and like that they would motivate exploration mm-hmm. and growth and continuing to learn. Because yep. sometimes when I hear those like define your parameters and your values, I think like, oh, I don't want to be more closed minded. I don't want to take myself away from experiences mm-hmm. that I might possibly um, might possibly have or engage right. in. Right. So right. that's super good. I think that you listed them out. Yep. That makes more sense. And so what happens to me anyways. is if a situation comes up that are people are like, hey, we would like you to come do this and if it interfere, interferes with my family time that I've scheduled out, then I'm like, it's not going to work. But right. I'd love to do it. You know, right. if, if, if it was like talking to a, a high school uh, group of kids that are struggling with anxiety, mm-hmm. you know, that's also on there. So that's something that's going to really have to be talked about. Yeah. And my wife will be like, no, you need to help. You know, you help yeah. those people. Right. It's almost, it seems like it's about creating space for each one of the values mm-hmm. and then putting them kind of in the right context to the right order yep. so that each one has the ability to breathe and to live yep within your life yeah. and they don't have to be perfect i mean and mine of course not yeah mine have changed over the years but yeah like you said you just added the bravery yeah. piece, you know like that's gonna change yeah. and that's i think that's an important piece yeah. too well, is, and, I, and i i tell other people to like be brave and practice exposing yourself to this and i'm like i don't even have it on my own values right like i got <laughs> i'm telling people this i gotta you know yeah. Put it on my own. Yeah. So. So, I mean, you started realizing, like, you needed to work on, you know, obviously just basically getting control of your anxiety. Mm-hmm. Was, I mean, I guess I'm not a person who struggles with anxiety, mm-hmm. but I've known people who yep. struggle with anxiety. It's been just over a year since, like, my best friend's wife took her own life. You know, she mm-hmm. struggled with anxiety. Yeah. 
is that something when you look back, do you pinpoint that to like, okay, yeah, there were these things in my childhood that kind of planted that and it grew from there? Or is it like, it's just always been a piece and... Or is it more physical or... Yeah, that's... I. Since I don't personally struggle with anxiety, right? And you look uh-huh. at other people, it's like, okay, yeah. is that, you know, is it a trauma thing that then I think it's probably different for all people, right. but. Yeah. So me, for me, like I had it when I was a kid all through school, it was fine after school. Right. Um, and then it got triggered again as an adult. It was different for both yeah. um, sections of my life. When I was a kid, it was very, very much to do with school. Sure. Um, you know, I, I had a little bit of ADD, um, but I was highly intelligent and creative, which doesn't fade and it doesn't bode well for people in school. Right. Um, it's not, it's not a space to get creative. No. Right. And so I struggled to like fit into this little box, you know, when I'm a circle. Yeah. So, yep. And I just couldn't do it. I mean, I, I know that now. And so I had crazy anxiety about doing it the way other people wanted me to do it. Yeah. But I couldn't do it. Yep. I actually was just listening to a podcast today on the way down. And they're like, if you think about people as different types of plants, um, you know, you're a cactus and I'm a sunflower and uh, what are you? A tree. I'm, pr- I'm prickly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> but so we get like 300 or well, we'll just say 30, like classroom size. And we put yep. all these different types of plants into a greenhouse. And we put them into 70 degree weather <laughs> right? We, when we water them. Yep. Which ones are going to survive? Right. That's the ones that are the luckiest to have that type of environment. Right. The ones that for thrive there. Yep. Yep. So that's why our, you know, our education system doesn't work for a person like me. Yep. You know, and, and I'm glad I did. And that's what I learned doing my rituals is learning about that type of thing. I'm like, oh, that's why that. Ah, okay, cool. Let that go. Right. <laughs> yeah. Instead of like having that be something where you're just like, yeah, that's a failure in high school yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. I mean, like, or being different. Yeah. Yeah. It totally, I mean, I went to doing online school because mm-hmm. I, I just, I mean, I wasn't, I was a fighter and I wasn't thriving in public school. Right. And I also <laughs> just, so like perspective wise, I had a 2.0 when I graduated high school. Mm-hmm. I went and did a semester of college for something I was passionate about right. for audio engineering and I had a 4.0, yep. right? It's like you see those things and it's helpful when you then, right? So you come out of college and you kind of just laugh it off, but it's like, yeah, I mean like I know I'm smart right. and I know I work hard, but it wasn't for you. It wasn't good. And then, but there's like that, those underlying thoughts tied mm-hmm. to that. And then you go, I went, did that semester of college. I'm like, oh yeah. Like yeah. it's because I'm, I will invest into and be passionate about and work hard on things that I think are beneficial and that I'm passionate about. But, you know, learning geography, like <laughs> who was this guy? In I didn't care. Yeah, right. Would, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, you're in it. I mean that you're in that you probably got in flow state there. You know, that's another thing Like flow state. You're like, I'm in it. I'm you know, down the rabbit hole of, of this specific thing. Right. Same thing happened to me. You know, I I, grad, I think I was in B honor roll somehow. I just I was very good at memorizing things and like yeah. kind of have a photograph. If I can like color code things, I can like just memorize them real quick. Yeah. Just stick in my head. That's how I passed the majority of my schooling. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was in Lakeview, at one point, um, I, I was um, kind of like the, the plant manager to be. You know, in that position. Sure. And it just wasn't for me. Right. So I'm like, I'm gonna go back to school. And this is when I met my wife. And uh, I was doing a PTA school, physical therapy assistant. Okay. Yep. 4.0. Um, right. Now, I would have finished that, but she had a pretty difficult pregnancy with our son. And so I was like, you know, I can't be gone every day. You yeah. Know, she had high blood pressure and a few other things going on, and which right. is fine. I'm glad I made that decision so I could be there. But it's the same thing. I was like, yeah, I can do school when it's something that I – I mean, that's why I'm, you know, into the physical fitness and nutrition and, right. and all that stuff. What you got going there? Sweet. Uh, I'm going to try out this old Forester whiskey. No? I don't know. Do you want some? No, no, okay. I'm good. That stuff puts uh, hair on your face, and I'm good in that air arena. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I can't grow it on my head, so I can grow it on my face. You, you yeah, can grow yeah. yours out, Dave, right? 
Do you have any sp- spots? I have, I have patches, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the thing. So there's, right, I mean, you can kind of see, but yeah. like right here, yeah. it just doesn't come in yet. So, well, I've come to figure like as you get older and it comes off the top of your head, it just, yeah, it gets just falls, really it kind of falls through <laughs> super thick on your face and then towards your back. Yeah. 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 I got hair and weird spots on my back. It's gross. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. I don't really come from a bald lineage, so yeah. I think I'm good. I think you're good. You, you and I have opposite haircuts, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love I'm it. I'm growing it out. I'm, I'm really hoping that, you know, they always say that it comes from your mom's side of the genetics, mm-hmm. but my dad's mom, her father, had a full head of hair, and he's bald just like my grandpa was. So. <laughs> well, you know Joe, my brother, yeah. and he's like a hairy beast man. Right. He's got a full head of hair. Still. Yeah, so I mean... It's kind of kind of Russian roulette there, but I'm still mad about that, right? <laughs> but I mean, if I do start going bald, I'm going with that look, yeah. Corey. I'm, yeah, me too. I'm going the beard and that started when after we got our uh, wedding pictures back because we took our pictures outside. And I'm like, hey, huh. <laughs> yowza! I'm I'm really bald, so I yeah. started I started shaving it real quick. <laughs> yeah. Yep. As soon as it starts to get bad enough, it'll go away. Mm. But I don't know. For now, I have hair. Yeah. We'll see where it goes. So moving back into the area, have you like had the chance to reconnect with a lot of family or were you kind of always super connected or? Yeah. You know, I mean, I, there, I, I have connected with them. It's just, we finally are like settled into our house with all our projects and, and whatnot. And kids are back in school. So we have some sort of routine. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, you know, there's a couple of, the, of my family members that work in, you know, Superior or Westmire. And uh, Westmore, and I um, kind of run to those guys every now and then. For sure. Yeah. My grandma actually lives right across the street. Yeah. I haven't been over there yet, but we got to get over there soon. <laughs> feel terrible about that. Yeah. But it's, you just get so busy, you right. know. Yeah. Especially with kids, I yeah. can imagine. But I run into people all the time. They're like, oh, hey, Corey. I'm like, oh, I'm so bad with names. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. Hey, you. Hey, uh, you might be someone i know yeah i have the opposite problem of everybody knows me yeah but i don't know anyone because i've only been in this town for three years and so it's like someone said hi to me yeah (laughs) well it was yeah well i'm on public and i'm just i'm like oblivious i'm kind of one track mind and people will say hi and i'll be like either they're like hey uh i saw you at the store the other day i'm like oh hey cool yeah small town sorry yeah (laughs) i'm so you did on purpose we drove by each other and you didn't wave to me (laughs) it wasn't on purpose you go to the grocery store and you got to put your head down. Otherwise you're going to get in 17 conversations before getting your food. And I'm totally the person who's, you know, it's like, I see someone who I know I'm not going to like, you know, pretend that I (laughs) don't see them. And and my wife is the exact opposite, right? She's like, see someone across the store who she knows. (laughs) We got to go now. She's like, we're going over to the frozen food because they're in the produce. And then we'll, we'll sneak around the corner and see if they're going and then we'll run past them, you know, and I'm totally like, you bring me in a store and I'll see three people I know and I'll be out in 40 minutes. And all I had to do was grab a a NOS to drink or something. I was weird when I started at Superior because it's like a number of people from high school that work there now. Yeah. But I hadn't seen them in four or five years because oh, yeah. you know they all went to different well they went to different schools in college and everyone and ends like, up back I'd and never forth. thought I'd see you again. <laughs> yeah. So hey, how's yeah. it going? Well, I I mean I've been gone for sixteen years and there's some people I haven't seen for twenty years. Right. I mean they still look similar, but I'm just it takes me a little bit to be like oh oh yeah yeah I'm not good with names to begin with so right. it's like well yeah in ten years you can do a lot to a person. <laughs> I, know, well, I mean I've had a lot of concussions and right all that fun stuff. Is the weather pretty much the same in Iowa, or is it is a little different? The, you know, it's just less snow. Just less snow, yeah. okay. Not as much wind during the winter. Sure. Yeah. Um, the winter doesn't last as long, but other than that, it's about the same. Yeah. Hardly, hardly any mosquitoes. No, there's like yeah, like a third of the lakes down there. Not and probably less than that. That's terrible. Right. I didn't study in uh, geography, is it? <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. David's yeah. area of expertise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a geographer. Actually, my. My brother's girlfriend is like, like she graduated for geography and stuff. I'm like, so she knows maps. Like, how could you, <laughs> you know, she's like interested in studying, you know, people groups and how oh, their, yeah. you know, like their locations affect all sorts of things mm. and plant groups. And I'm just like, huh. yeah, it's awesome that somebody's passionate yeah, about right. that. It's probably yeah. important, but Good for her, man, wow. My my homeschool group <laughs> had a geography B. Yeah. Like a spelling bee, and we'd, oh, we'd go okay. and 
like answer qu- I wasn't very good at it but like on a map they're like no What's just like sitting of? like sitting on a panel and then they just go from kid to kid yeah and then like as soon as you get one wrong you get two wrong you're like get kicked off the panel until there's one kid left hmm. wow that was kind of random that's I never got into those shameful. that'll no. give you anxiety yeah I know right yeah <laughs> or being like 11 like sweat crap I don't about. know right so what brought you back to Morris uh, you know, it was kind of timing. Um, okay. you know, obviously we've had a lot of surgeries and, um, I haven't even talked about the whole cancer thing. Um, right after I, I think it was my, I don't know, I'm going to get the time frames mixed up, but I think it was right after my last hip surgery. Um, my wife actually ended up getting uh, cervical cancer. Okay. Uh, yeah, this it was kind of out of the blue. She had a, like, a an abnormal women's test, whatever they do, um, whatever they call it right. <laughs> anyways yeah and and so the doctor's like yeah you got to go to the specialist and so we went to the specialist and found out she had like type 1a cervical cancer which is really super early sure um and so she had surgery about a month later and got that taken care of and then uh after that i had one in june that was a mole skin cancer okay so i was i don't have a whole lot of moles and i was like man that just looks weird so i got it checked out yeah um, got it taken out with my mother-in-law. Hi, Joni. I'm guessing she'll, she'll listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she, uh, she had me come down and they took it out. Yeah. Uh, and then a week later I had to go back in cause it was, it was, it was shallow spreading, which isn't the one that's more aggressive. Okay. It's less aggressive. Yep. And so I had like boom, boom, back to back surgeries. Right. Um, but then on top of all the other ones we were just financially, we're like, we got to sell our house I and mean, there's not no other option. Right. And our credit card is like cranked up and. Um, we had, you know, been asked about moving back up and, you know, there's a few people around here that have tried to get me up for years Yep. and, um, talking to one specific person, I won't, won't say who it is, <laughs> but there was like one of those conversations you're like, Oh, I got to talk to my wife. Cause he, I mean, it made so much sense. Right. Yeah. And and he went on, you know, the timing, what about your, your kids with their cousins and growing up with their cousins and yeah, because our kids would cry on the way home, you know, and it was just, it was heartbreaking. You know, they're, they're the ones that are left out. Right. Um, not maliciously, but you know, right. we, we're five hours away. Oh yeah. I mean, I grew up from, I was born in California and we moved back here when I was nine, but mm-hmm. I have no relationship with my cousins, right. you know? So yeah. Yeah, and, and so that you know, we knew how to, we had to get to a point where we were gonna sell our house, and um, we we're just like, you know, we gotta if we're gonna do it, we don't want to downscale here. Right. Let's sell our house and make a lot of money, you know, and we can, you know, plus opportunity. You know, yeah. There's a lot of opportunity up oh, here yeah. for for me personally, and you know, she wanted to work a little bit less. Yep. And, and that was doable. Um, <laughs> and then our kids that are at the age where it's not as traumatizing, you know, they're seven and four. Right. Not right. gonna, they're not going to remember moving. Yeah. Good right. time to switch for school and right. making Definitely. friends and everything. But they were super pumped. Yeah. You know, the family we left awesome. in Iowa, it was probably one of the harder things we've done is tell them that we're leaving. Yep. Um, you know, and it's still, it's still, we miss them a lot, um, but we try our best to get together. And so it was, yeah. it was a lot about timing, but then, you know, being around family again. Right. So been here since May. Yeah. First, been good so far? So far. Got a lot of people ask me which church I'm going to go to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got one you can check out. I know, right? Yeah. How how big was the city you were in before? Uh, it's like ten thousand. It's so, very similar to Morris, actually. Did you have a Walmart though? Yep. And a Target. Yeah, super Walmart. Yeah. No, we didn't have a Target. Oh, okay. We had Kmart for a while. Right. Oh, wow. And Morris, you just got Shopco. Shopco. Yeah. Which, Crapco. So I think it's I think it's Target, Walmart, Kmart. Dollar, Walgreens, dollar store. <laughs> then Shopco. <laughs> nah, Shopco is good. It works, it works hey, for what we need. You can find some good deals yeah. there every once in a while. But yeah. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've only ever known small towns, so it's yeah. not. No, I this mean, is a bigger town than I grew up in. It's yeah. kind of like, oh, there's a couple fast food options. and We could use a Taco Bell and a Chipotle. Ooh, Chipotle and would like be good. Maybe an Actually, it would be bad. Oh, I would be broke. Foods. Yeah. <laughs> Come Trader on, Joe's. nutritional guy. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Such a dorky thing to say. Uh, <laughs> Trader <laughs> Joe's store. That'd be nice. Yeah. Trader Joe's, that'd be pretty yeah, sweet. Think, yeah. But no, it's been good so far. We're uh, we're liking it. You know, I, I was a little nervous about, you know, my wife transitioning up 
to the place she doesn't. I mean, she's come back on a, like the alumni weekends and met a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you know, we had a gym here that we go to that we had visited a few times, and yep. Um, she's actually um kind of like a um a fill in coach there now. Okay. She got her certificate too, and liking that. So. What what gym is that? The Empowered Living Gym. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah. If you ever see my wife around town, ask her to show her abs. Okay. <laughs> She's gonna be so. Mad. That wouldn't be awkward at <laughs> all, <right>. man. <laughs> so are you the one with the abs? Uh, yeah. Uh, I hear you're ripped. Who are you? And who are you? <laughs> Your husband was on my podcast, so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. yeah. Oh man. Yeah. What else? I mean, you guys wanna just let me know. Well, I, I mean, yeah, know. we're we're only an hour in. We go like. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we usually go like an hour and a half. Hour we? and a half is yeah. normal. So. Dude, yeah. I, I love the long form. Yeah, yeah me too. I, I love I love just uh, sort of the context that that going for a while because you know you're not really comfortable for the first half hour. No, right in and, a podcast. And I was listening to so I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast that you posted. Yeah, um, and like that's that's mega long. Like that's three hours every yeah. one. Like all of his podcast. I tried to listen to another one and I was just like, okay, yeah, like yeah. I don't know. I'm the type of person that like. I'm not just going to listen to something for yeah. listening to it. And that one had enough like, like practical pieces, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. that I was like, okay, I can apply this, take the things I appreciate, push out the things I don't. The other one, I was listening to someone with a UFC fighter. And I was just like, Oh yeah. They're yeah. talking about strip clubs and stuff. And yeah. I'm just like, okay, yeah, no, not, not my, I've well. listened to like 200 to 300 Joe Rogan podcasts, oh which my is, gosh. yeah, he has tons so of many, hours. Though. Dude, he is. It's, it's ridiculous. He's got but, a lot of great people on there with like solid advice, like yeah, and solid information. I, I just yeah. love him because it's it's like one of the he's got super liberal people, super conservative people, really like smart PhD professor types, degenerate comedians. It's like yeah. it's like you get so many flavors of life, and he's so good at, at like being open to listening to them, but yep. like still having his own opinions, mm-hmm. right? And I don't know, like if you, t- is, I don't know. After like diving deep into podcasts the last year and a half, two years, I'll see something on TV and I'm just like, it's so superficial, right? Like, yeah. like compared to any podcast I listen to, like a five minute clip. Yep. It, it just doesn't. Mm-hmm. It, it's there's no substance, and it's just. I mean, I think we, <laughs> just about everyone I know would agree on this that it's like, you can't talk real things, you know, real challenging like heart issues, life issues, whatever, if you don't have, like, some perspective of what the per- – like, the person who's saying what mm-hmm. they're saying, is what, where their heart's at. Right. Yeah. And so it's, like, so much with our current culture and the media is just so saturated with, you know, Facebook's arguments of, like, <laughs> my two sentences and then your two sentences and my two sentences. <laughs> yeah. so funny. And, you know, the Joe Rogan, uh, like, in that episode – they're talking about just how polarizing both the right and the left yep. are. You know, yeah. it's all about polarizing instead of being able to sit and listen mm-hmm. and understand a side and then bring up your perspective and be able to even leave not necessarily agreeing but understanding each other better. Yeah. Right. And the whole podcast, you know, like you actually have the opportunity to talk for an hour and a half right. and get some background story and understand how did I come to that conclusion? Well, these experiences and Mm -hmm. you know actually have conversation around it instead of just reading somebody's sentence of perspective or hearing a blurb of what trump or whoever said and then just like jumping on that hot button topic yeah and you believe it because this is the side i'm on right it doesn't matter if it's moral it doesn't matter if it's wrong right but I'm on this side, so I have to agree with it. Right. Yeah. Or it's this totally, side. It's totally like a. It's like war, right? <laughs> it's like yeah. well, we're, you know, we're this teams. Side. It's like my it's, team yep. is my team right. is the best, no matter what. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's totally crazy. It's ridiculous. I, I. I mean, I can't imagine that it's going to be that way for much longer. You. You got to wonder if the scale is going to tip back yep. because we sort of we sort of live right now in this non-listening, almost shame culture. Shame anyone mm-hmm. who doesn't believe in you. Right. Other people, and. uh it it's just it's not watch, constructive do you guys watch the news no, no. <laughs> yeah i don't watch the news either <laughs> <laughs> so that's the one thing i've noticed is like i'll i've been off for i don't even you know like three years now right i, I read about it you yep. know I, that's a good way yeah. to do it is read i read like it. tech news <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> right um but then you get on there and it's like let me scare the crap out of you about what's going on in the world but yep. then buy this wonderful product 
You know, right. I mean, it's I like, have the call to action at the end of the whoa. post. Well, I'm like, I don't, I don't watch any news, and I really, honestly, try to keep my perspectives fairly like open about mm. politics and all that stuff. But when one of those hot things comes up, yeah, it's like I go read a article, yeah, and then you see all this, you know, all these things that you're like, okay, wow, like that's a big that, deal. That really then I Google the same thing, <laughs> and I like if I ever do look up something that's happening, mm-hmm. it's like I'm reading three articles, and I'm like, yeah, okay. When you piece together three articles, you're like, okay, I have a little more perspective. You can find the middle ground because what's actually happening. You've got yeah. three different people who are writing on, you know, mm-hmm. a five minute something that somebody got all upset about. And mm-hmm. at least at the end of that, hopefully, then you got a little more of a yeah. generic I like, perspective. I like when I do Google stuff, like, especially if it's very polarized, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll go like five pages in. <laughs> and then read that whole five page mm-hmm. and find the articles on there. Yeah. Because it's going to be heavily skewed one way oh, yeah. on the first hits. Yep. Yep. Um, I think I read today 95% of clicks are off the first page of Google. Right. So oh, basically yeah. if you're on the second or third or fourth, you're, you're non-existent. Is the Cowboys so. and Unicorns podcast on the I have no idea. First page. If Sounds like a good way to I just to know I got to get some, I got to get some product pages on Superior's website to get from the second Show page to there. the first. Right. You know, I <laughs> yeah. mean, honestly, that's 95% sounds like a good number to make sure that you get the information that people like need to see or that you want them to see yeah. on that first right. page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting when you interesting. start Interesting. When you start doing things or like, you know, yeah. Dan from an actual marketing <laughs> for a company perspective, you start to like See these things, you're like, okay. The sounds, question, like a, sounds like a good opportunity. Yeah. yeah. The question I have is, it seems like there's somewhat of a blame of, so we have like the Google and the Facebook and Apple, and we have these almost, you know, monopolies or becoming monopolies mm-hmm. as far as these tech companies. Yeah. But the question I have is like, do they have, it seems like uh, within the public opinion, it's like there's this thought that those companies have a certain responsibility to, either like not have fake news or show a balanced perspective. Right. And Filter out. and like Facebook has even come out and, you know, they've said like, we're going to try to be more journalistically sound and stuff. Right. But the thing I always wonder is like, they're not just because they're super successful companies and they're the platforms that we all go to when we're looking for information. Is it really Google's responsibility right. that I have a balanced, like I'm getting the right information mm-hmm. because right. most other companies don't like, our company, like we only, like the only news that coming out of Superior is good news about Superior, right? right. And you'd only expect that any company yeah. wouldn't have any sort of balanced perspective, but, right? But Google and Facebook, they're just companies, right? They're not, they're not news organizations, are right. they? Yeah, they're disseminating I, the news. I mean, with the with the um, attention that uh, Facebook has, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, as long as they're not skewing it one way or the other. I think they're gonna be okay. It's yeah, like as long not, as they're, they're not, not touching it, right? It's if they're like, unbiased. Yeah, right. I mean, I think it's gonna be. And they don't have a moral obligation to. Right. But, right. But in the, in, a, in a way, they are skewing it because of the like the algorithms of what shows up. Right. Like that they, is They've true. got an equation that says this shows up first, this shows up right. second, this shows up seventy eighth. I know it makes me so mad. Right. Yeah. But, so <laughs> that's. But it, it it can't not be that, can it? Well, it's like Instagram. They switched how their the stuff comes up now. Yeah. And everybody got. Right. I just want to see it in like, like um, uh, the chronological. Date. Thank you. That's the word yeah. order of the people that yep. you yeah. choose. Yeah. Order of the people like, I follow when they post. I yeah. want to see it. I mean, I want to just pop yep. out there and see what people are posting right mm-hmm. now. But they changed it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's Instagram. Which well, is and along cool. those same lines, like I've been so frustrated. So I started up this pipe making company. Mm-hmm. You know four and a half months ago now which is awesome by the way yeah it's pretty sweet um but sweatbird pipe co follow on instagram i got to so so facebook ads and instagram ads are like what you have to do if you want to have a business page and actually get people to see your content and get new people to find your content yeah organic reach like organic reach like i mean facebook even pushes it way down if you have a business account but because i sell tobacco smoking products they don't let me do ads for anything oh, really? that I do. Yeah. So huh. like I can't post and promote, like pay them to have any of my posts show up in anyone else's newsfeed because it promotes smoking. Huh. That's crazy. But if you yeah. had, I mean, just to play devil's advocate, if you had like on our website, if someone approached you and they said, we want to advertise X and such a thing like this alcohol product or 
we want to we want to advertise our porn site. Right. You would probably say, no, you can't advertise your porn site on cowboysandunicorns.com. Right, for sure. And you would be like, that's completely my right, and I don't want to have that information. So Facebook's just making the choice, and they say, we don't want smoking ads on our platform. Right. And I understand that the fact of the matter is Marlboro <laughs> and all those companies would pay millions of dollars <laughs> yeah. in Facebook ads right. to get 16-year-old kids interested in smoking cigarettes because they think it's cool. Yeah. Right. But it's frustrating from like a small business perspective of basically what I'm trying to do is like create artisan pieces of art that <laughs> you can smoke tobacco in. Right. Like it's frustrating from that perspective of like, well, then you just get crapped on because. Yeah. yeah but is it even the same tobacco that's in that's cigarettes? well, that's the thing. It's not cigarettes. It's but like, cigarettes I mean, are all cracked out and chemical out. And right. Not cracked out. But, I mean, they're, <laughs> they're like all chemicals. They're right. cracking yeah, cigarettes, it's, kids. It's, yeah, kids. It's straight up carcinogens. <laughs> yeah. uh, crack. But I mean, like the stuff that you guys, it's like, it's tobacco. Right. Yeah. Right. It's just straight tobacco. It's not the same thing to right. me. Not No. And it's no. not, and it's not addictive. And right. Those things. So it's like, now granted, if they kind of made the line of like, well, we're not going to promote addictive smoking. Well, then how many ads do they then have to filter through? And maybe it's their easiest way of being like, Ooh, sugar ads. What about pop? You can't do pot can't? ads either. No, no, I have, well, not because I've been researching how to sell pot pipes or anything, but like I've been trying no, to pop. research. Soda. Oh, pop. Soda. Yeah. Well, that's a good question. Yeah. I, I, I don't that's see other... pop ads. You don't? That's interesting. Uh, like, I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. I guess if I actually, you can advertise uh, propane bobtails. That's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> or you can see but like those, what you've been looking those at are on basically, Amazon. Those <laughs> are basically your... bombs that travel down the road. Yeah. They explode from the moving get hit bombs. By a meteor. Fossil fuels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can destroy the earth, but we can't uh, destroy our own bodies. You know what also bugs me about Facebook is like I was just saying, um what you've been looking at on Amazon will like pop up on your page <sighs> and I'm like, What? Yeah, it's crazy. retargeting, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, right? it's it's amazing. Why are you what's watching out me, man? there? I mean, the marketing products of yeah. I mean we have them for our company where it's like you can see who opened your email yep. and then where they went and how long they spent on each page and yep. all that stuff. I th- so I think there needs to be a lot more uh, media literacy education like in this day and age, mm-hmm. like, even for like older generations, because there'll be things m- like my dad will say about like they can track this and do this. And like from my perspective, I'm like, of course they can, because I, I work in like digital yeah. marketing and yep. like web marketing. Right. But um yeah, that's not as that's not as apparent to everybody and I don't I mean I, I guess I don't know what they teach in schools now. Right. But I think that should be a part of it of like this is this is how the internet works mm-hmm. and this is how companies are trying to monetize online and when you put in your email address or when you go to a site and this this is you know, this website cookied you, that means they're following you around the web. Right. Just basic stuff like that so that people understand right. what they're willingly giving up. Yeah, mm-hmm. people don't understand because it's buried in fine all. print. At least the majority of people don't yeah. understand that. Yeah. I mean, the fact that if I go click on some Salesforce product mm-hmm. because I'm kind of searching for a new app, like I'll get a call within 24 hours. It's like, hey, this is so and so wondering if you're interested in buying any quoting tools, and you're like, yeah, you. <laughs> it's the squatty potty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you seen those? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's interesting because that type of education needs to be out there too for um, uh, results-based products. Uh, you know, like we work in the fitness industry. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, people want results right now. Right. That's how their information comes. Right. Results don't happen right now. I mean, I, I think that it's along the same lines of, of learning what's happening in the internet mm-hmm. with um, re, not reprogramming, that's the wrong word, but um, re-educating people on... Because when I, I mean, this would probably trip you guys out. Like, I didn't have an email address until I was like a freshman in college. Right. We just didn't have any. Right. Like, I didn't even know what to do with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just like, yeah. well, what's this? Right. You know, and so like back then, like people had a little bit of patience. Like right now, people want it now. They want their results. They yeah. want this. They want that because they have access to the information. The results should be the same. Yep. And so, you know, as a coach, I mean, we have to help people with patience. Yeah. And especially people that are struggling with like the mental side of things, they, they want to get out of the situation right now. Mm-hmm. Like, but I, I promise you, if you keep doing it over and over, it's going to get better. Right. And that falls onto people like me. But as far as the internet goes, it's, it's so hard with, with helping people with patience. I mean, I just, I know I've noticed that 
and it just kind of came to mind when you were talking about about the uh, re-educating people about that type of thing it's just interesting oh yeah i mean the way that our culture has gone i mean it's uh everything that i want if i want it like i can have it now yeah i mean there's no need for actually Mm -hmm. like caring about anyone else's situations or yeah you know doing the difficult work yeah self personal accountability or or whatever it's just like i get it i got prime yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) amazon prime yeah and it expands beyond shopping to yeah anything and everything which is super awesome as far as like regular goods and services like how quick uh, oh yeah they come and yeah it's been interesting interesting working like for a manufacturing company for last year realizing all of the behind the scenes work that gets put into things that i've taken for granted my whole life Mm -hmm. just like having our president talk about like this is how many um you know tons of aggregates need to be produced for every person every year just to make hospitals and roads and everything right and there's somebody you know blasting rock off off the side of a quarry yeah (laughs) doing that and you never see it because right the companies aren't high profile and and it just happens except you know it doesn't there's a lot of work and and time going into it well and you go around you see some of those giant pits too like i always like in my mind when i would hear that stuff as a kid i'm like there's a giant hole in the earth they're gonna get to the center (laughs) soon (laughs) and it's just gonna keep getting bigger i mean obviously i'd anxiety issues but like in my mind I'm like <laughs> it's got to have a giant hole in the middle of nowhere that we're all going to fall into someday yeah but i mean you've seen those it's crazy like yeah. some of those and but we're i mean we're, they're not even like scratch scratching the surface but i mean like it goes right. so far down mm-hmm. like it can go so far down yeah oh yeah so. and and you're still not even yeah hit an issue yeah but it's interesting mm-hmm. but you know it's funny i <laughs> It just dated me a little bit about the whole email thing, but <laughs> I, I mean, I love Instagram. Like that's my, that's my jam right there. Yeah. I, I just like, I mean, you probably, you're following me now, aren't you? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like every morning it's like three posts and yeah. I'm like, this guy's a hippie. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. But I mean, I, it's, I, that's just how I, I've kind of gotten to is this point of, of being positive always, you know? Yeah. Um, even through surgery. And when I found out I had my, had to have my neck done again, I'm like, all right, what's the next step? Yeah. Like I didn't. You know, the, the hardest part of that whole thing was watching my kids kind of get sad or, or scared for me. Right. You know, I wasn't worried about it. Yeah. I'd be fine. Yeah. Um, but that's all, you know, attributed to my morning routine. Yeah. You know, I purposely get into that mind state and yeah. I try to pass that on in those posts. Yep. Um, yeah. And it's the beauty of Instagram outside of all of the other platforms is there's not people that are really like at least – you don't see them very much, but people who are like, I'm just going to troll and post hateful pictures. Mm -hmm. Like it's not about your, you know, your description of your picture, right? Mm -hmm. You scroll, scroll through Instagram. You're just looking at the content, the picture. You're not reading. Like if anyone posts a paragraph description, I'm not clicking more. Right. Yeah. You know, so there's a different element to it of, I mean, you're just kind of getting real, stuff that generally it's either what you want to see or it's encouraging or you know you're seeing someone's right. life yep. versus you know getting someone's perspective or someone sharing right. uh you know some so, whatever left wing or right wing crazy video and thinking that it's truth and all that stuff it does seem like instagram is a little less political or why yeah right than facebook compared to twitter and facebook yeah. right it's almost more a window into people's lives which mm-hmm. facebook kind of used to be right i mean that was where You'd post all your pictures and your mm-hmm. status of, hey, today I went and I ate a piece of pizza. It was <laughs> <Yeah>. great. <laughs> like, they, have no, they don't have music on your homepage, though, like MySpace. Oh, MySpace was good. <laughs> so much drama with top friends. I never had MySpace. You know, yeah. oh, Me man. and my wife used to talk on MySpace like when we first started wow. knowing each other. Yeah. Oh, man, it's funny. Like when the song that she, she used to have on her page comes on, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, MySpace awesome. was a whole nother yeah. thing. Did but you? So you never had it. I I would go on MySpace when I was a teenager and I was first getting into music because I just yeah. go to bands right. and listen That's to music. Yeah, about it. but yep. I didn't. I didn't like sign up. Because like for teenagers, 
MySpace was just drama because you had top friends. Yeah. <laughs> and so, oh, I'm not you know, your top friends anymore? you'd put a girl as your top friend <laughs> to let hey. her know if she's your top friend. Or, yeah, you'd be status. mad at somebody and you'd move them down to number eight <laughs> instead yeah. of number three. It was just this total, like, political yeah. way of, man. Yeah. Wait, if, you were, if you were in the number one spot, though, you guys were like, Facebook or official. yeah, you're, like you're Facebook dating. official now is like MySpace, like number one spot, numero, number yeah. one on my, yeah, you're dating if you're number one, yeah, for basically. sure. Yeah. yeah, Facebook should have top friends. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> roll out the new oh, feature. It would be funny to just like create an app of sorts, like mm-hmm. that would add that to people's Facebooks. Yeah, I'm so bad at Facebook, I just repost stuff mostly, uh-huh. yeah, like from I, Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or just yeah. there's one video on my page right now, it's this little toddler. And she's going, snacks. <laughs> <laughs> just hilarious. Yeah. Just, you know, dumb videos like that. Right. That's what I post. But, That's yeah. you know, the Instagram thing is kind of a, you know, an extension of, you know, what I tried to, I just totally went deep a second here. <laughs> totally like to exude, like as yeah. far as positivity and, yeah, you know, it's, it's spirituality, it's religion, it's, you know, energy, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same thing. And when you have an opportunity to spread that out, you know, I talk about a circle of influence or, you know, an extension of um, attention. Right. You, you got to put that out there, especially since that's one of my values. Yeah. And that's why I do it. I do it on a fairly regular basis. Right. And if you, if you did that on Facebook, sadly, you would have people troll those things. <laughs> yeah. Versus Instagram is kind of just like, well, somebody's going to scroll through yeah. and they're going to, you know, I did that the, this morning. Yeah. I was like scrolling through looking to see what likes i got and i see one of Corey's posts and some encouraging something you know but it's like <laughs> you're like hippie you're seeing that <laughs> start your day <laughs> but it's yeah. yeah it's it's a much it's a far different platform than mm-hmm. what yeah and those usually come from been. like my morning routine like right. something that'll pop up in the meditation like okay today's posts are going to be about positivity Right. Or, you know, whatever. So you meditate and do all your stuff for 15 minutes and then you find the perfect yep. pictures for Instagram <laughs> yep. for 15 minutes. Meditation People are going to like me if I post this one. <laughs> More followers. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do with my pipe page. Yeah. Not so much with my personal page. Get that positive feedback. Yep. I need likes. Please like Buy me. Buy my pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Please like me. Uh, Sorry for all the coughing listeners. A little under the weather. I think yeah. you're getting better than you were the other night. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude yeah. came to a fire and he was like, "My nose is just running." Not just like, oh, running. Nice. <laughs> like you, oh should, God. you should probably go home and sleep, dude. <laughs> yeah. <'cause> I did. <laughs> oh man. Well, it's been super ha- fun having you on, Corey. Yeah, appreciate it. It's been fun. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Anytime. Awesome. awesome to get to know you better. And Dan and I will see you on Saturday morning. Workout in yeah. the park. Yep. I'll when be pe- the guy that's When chilling. people listen to this, they'll show up in the park Saturday <laughs> yeah. morning and they'll yeah. be like, what the world? Yeah. Yeah. What's it, your What's your Instagram handle? It, what it, do we got to plug here at the end? So yeah. my Instagram is coach.corey. Coach.corey. Yep. Sweet. Yeah. Changes every now and then, but that's the one it is now. And, then and Empowered Living, I think, is just Empowered, Empowered Living Co. Empowered Living Co. Okay. On, on Instagram. Instagram. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I follow And then on, on Facebook as well for them guys. And then just Corey Schmidt going, the Twitters and the Facebooks. Yeah. Yeah, check them out. I mean, if you're looking for a gym or, yep. you know. I you're out so. there and you, you struggle with anxiety. Um, if you got any issues with that or know someone that is, just hit me up on either one of those and we'll, yeah. get, we'll get going on it. That's Help awesome. you out. Sounds good. Cool. Well, this has been awesome. Appreciate it. We're signing off. This is David. I'm Dan. Have a good night.